Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of AV Astronomy. And if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. Today's video, we're gonna be going over how to collimate an RC Ritchie Cratian telescope. Uh, there's some good tutorials out there, but I feel like from what I've seen and read online, there's just not a one stop, one source, start to finish, this is what you need, these are the tools you have gotta have for this, this is how you get this done properly. So that's what I wanted to do today. After practicing, working on my accuracy and collimating this RC telescope, I have narrowed it down to what you absolutely need, what's necessary to get this done properly. So with that, let's go inside here and get this thing going. Okay, so what you'll need today is a Cheshire, set of Allen keys, some tape, preferably masking tape, but I didn't have any, Sharpie, a screwdriver with the Phillips tip, number two, some canned air, a laser collimator, this one's the Howie glider, and which, let me go ahead and say, you're, you're going to need a Howie glider. <laughs> Um, you can get by with some of the steps on doing this with another with other types of laser collimators, but you're gonna need this right here, the concentric circle attachment. And in a little while, we'll go over why that's important. But these are the tools you'll need. You're also gonna need a tilt plate, also known as a collimation ring. You can get these on websites like Agena Astro. They run about ninety dollars, but they are totally worth it. If you want to get this focuser aligned, which is a, a crucial part of getting these optics completely aligned, you got to have a focusing tilt plate. All right, so let's start with step one. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that this focuser is aligned with the secondary, that the laser points right in the center dot of the secondary. Now, the problem with that is these telescopes, unless you have a truss tube version where you can just kind of look down the side or an angle of the truss tubes and you can see that center dot donut on the secondary, if you've got one of these steel tube versions, it's got a baffle that extends all the way from the primary almost, you know, about halfway up the scope and it essentially blocks the view. I've tried looking at every angle possible. <laughs> there is no way you can see the center donut without taking off that baffle. So the first thing we got to do here is we've got to take apart this telescope. We got to remove the primary mirror cell from the rear of the telescope. So that's what we're going to do first. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is tape off where this tube meets the mirror cell so that we orient this thing as best we can when we put it back on. Okay, get it as close to where it was before as possible. So that's going to be step one. Now I would say use masking tape, but this is all I have. So I'm just using regular old scotch tape. And I do two pieces, one on each side. All right, what I do is I draw an X on it. This will help you make sure that you align the primary mirror cell as accurately as possible when you put this back together. Because with what one thing you'll learn real quick with RC telescopes is accuracy is everything and there's a very little tolerance for error to get the most out of these telescopes and have them properly collimated. So now that we've done that, we're gonna have to just cut this right here. Okay. So let's cut where we made that line, that X, real gentle, you don't want to scratch the paint. There we go. Okay, next step, we're going to unscrew the screws that are holding the primary mirror cell 
to the telescope. Okay, so now that you've taken all your screws out, we're going to remove the primary mirror cell from the telescope. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to be tight, uh, really tight. Uh, I had to use like a butter knife or if you can use some other kind of plastic edge tool so you don't damage the scope to, to kind of break that initial seal, uh, it'll, it'll pry it off. But you want to be very careful here. Make sure you have a firm grip on the scope and the mirror cell and pull it off with force, but do it slowly. Okay, now here is your primary mirror cell. And this right here is the baffle I'm talking about. This is what blocks the view of being able to see that donut on the secondary mirror. So we're just, you just unscrew this. And while you have this out, give it a little puff of candy to get some of that dust off. Okay, the next step now is to put this back on the scope so that we can align the focuser. Now you would think there'd be, a, even taping this off, you could get a perfect alignment, but there's still, even taping this off about a millimeter or, or a little more, give or take, of play to where you could line this thing up because of how the screw holes are aligned on this telescope. That's why it's so important to mark this off with tape and to do your best to align it back visually as best you can. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Just for safety's sake, we're gonna put some of these back in before we go to the next step. All right, so I've put two on the top here. I'm gonna put two on the bottom. Okay, now we know this thing's not going anywhere. <clears throat> okay. So now what we're gonna do is put that laser collimator uh, with the standard uh, attachment piece. We're not using that concentric circle one yet. So we're gonna use this standard attachment piece with the Howie Glider laser collimator to see how our alignment is on that donut. Now, you can eyeball this just looking down the tube, but please be careful. Never look directly into the laser. I'm sure most of you know this, but for those of you who don't, practice caution with that um, you only it's only safe to look at the light reflected off of a surface as long as it's not reflecting directly back into your eyes so please be careful with that um, the safest thing to do is just put a can and more accurate way is to put a camera and I'm going to use my 77d with a 100 millimeter macro lens so we can get real close and tight on that donut to ensure we are right where it needs to be so that's going to be the next step here. Now you'll notice here, um, and I, what I have is my camera pointed straight at that donut uh, with my digital SLR and a 100 millimeter macro, macro lens. You don't have to use a macro lens. You could use a digital point and shoot, whatever you have, but you need to be able to zoom in and focus in on that donut. And as you can see, the alignment of that laser and ignore you can totally ignore this stuff on the top and the bottom don't worry about that just focus on that donut you want that dot in the center of that donut so we do have to make some minor adjustments here to correct that okay so now you want your allen key and the only adjustments for this particular step that i'm going to make are going to be on this focusing or this collimation ring right here you've got two locking screws that you have to loosen on each of these three before you can start making adjustments. So that's gonna be step one. So let's loosen those up.
Okay, so now that I've loosened those up, we're going to make really small adjustments here. I'm talking like an eighth of a turn to a sixteenth of a turn. And let's just watch the other camera and see what happens to the movement of that laser. Okay, that's moving it slightly to the left. We'll just, I don't know that that's the one to start. Let's try this other one and see what direction it goes. Let's loosen it just a tad. Nope. All right, that's tightening it just a little. That's getting us a little more centered on it. Let's go down here to this one. Nope. And guys, this may take some time. Just kind of do very small adjustments until you get that just that center dot ring that center dot in the donut there and you can make some wide ones just see where the movement goes like look at this I'm going all the way left all the way right and you can see how that traverses from one end to the next also do a spot check Look down the tube yourself and see how close it is. Okay, so it's still just kind of sitting on the top part of that center, that donut ring. So let's get that lowered a bit. I'm actually making some pretty big adjustments because I'm just not seeing a whole lot of movement. But this is key. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. I think one more turn right here. Okay, that right there looks pretty well illuminated. I'm going to do a little visual check looking down the tube here. And again, I'm just carefully, it's, it's close, almost there. It needs to come a little bit lower. It needs to come a little bit lower. All right, let's check that. Again, don't look directly at that laser dot. Oh man, that's just about there. Yeah, I'd say that's on the money, just about. I'm gonna. It's just a little to the right. I'm trying to make a small adjustment. That way, there we go, that was about an eighth of a turn. Nope, the other way. So same side, let's go the other way. it again. Almost. I want just a tad too over. It's a very iterative, iterative process. Um, you kind of check, adjust. It does take a little patience, but once you get this down the first time, there we go. That's dead on center. There we go. All right. So as you can see, it took a little time there to get that focus are adjusted to where that laser is pointed directly at that center donut on the secondary. It didn't take me but maybe five minutes, but I did have to make some large adjustments, a lot larger than I thought. So with that being said, once you get it closer to the center, you're going to want to make some smaller tweaks, you know, eighth of a turn, sixteenth of a turn. But once that's centered in that donut, step one is done. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to, we got to take this primary mirror cell back off, put the baffle back on, make sure we align it exactly as we have it now, okay? And then we can start working on the secondary and getting that adjusted. And we'll be using the Cheshire to do that. So here we go. Another quick note, make sure you tighten down the locking screws on the collimation ring. It would be awful if you made all those adjustments, didn't lock those down, and then went on to the next steps because it's just going to tilt 
out of uh, out of alignment. So be sure to lock those back down and then you can move on to step two. Okay, so now we're ready for step two. You've put the you've put your baffle back on your primary mirror, you've screwed in the primary mirror back into the scope, everything's tightened down, ready to go. Your focuser is now properly aligned. So step two, we're gonna work on the secondary. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need to use your Cheshire that I was talking about earlier. You're gonna want to align your camera directly into the viewing hole of that Cheshire, okay? Also, check and make sure the camera's level and the telescope is level. Um, I just used a little simple leveling tool I have here, but you're gonna, you may have to wedge, you know, or shim your telescope to get it level. You want this to be a nice straight aligned point of view here. So, what you're looking for So you can already see there that the secondary alignment is off now, okay? Also, you're going to want a nice bright light shined on the wall that you have the telescope pointed at so that the donut ring and the center dot illuminate bright and it makes it easier for the camera and for your eye to see. So. Now that we've got everything lined up on this, let's go ahead and make some adjustments to get that secondary aligned. All right, so what I'm doing now is making adjustments to this secondary mirror. And the rule of thumb here is if you've loosened one, you gotta tighten the other two. Sometimes I only tighten one. It depends how tight these already are. If you got this brand new there you shouldn't have to do too many adjustments on this but if you got it used like i did you may have to make some more adjustments but as i stated before um one eighth to one sixteenth turns should be enough so let's let's see what happens here i think this is the right one here we go all right so i'm watching this camera over here as i make these adjustments i'm gonna do a slight loosen see what happens and then tighten this one here. So I loose and remember what adjustments you make. I always just tell myself, so I lower right loose, upper tighten, and check the, it doesn't look like it's changed a whole lot. I'll also check visually um, and then come back to the camera sometimes. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, that's pretty off. So let's just keep making some adjustments here. I'll loosen this one. Let's just get this in the ballpark. Loosen there. Tighten there. Tighten. Loosen. Okay. Loosen there. I gotta tighten here. I don't want to tighten too much though, but that does need to be tightened. Tighten there. Okay, now we're getting close. No. So I need to tighten that one more. Okay, this is where the adjustments are going to get. See how quickly I did that? This is where you're going to make some really small adjustments. Okay, that looks pretty close to me. I'm going to give this a visual inspection. close but we're not quite there this is where we're going to do just really some tiny adjustments I'm gonna do a 16th turn left there loosen there tighten here see what I get and that was the right choice okay so we got that aligned pretty well I, I visually inspected it I'm gonna do a quick inspection with the camera and make sure it looks lined up there and then we'll move on to step three which is checking the alignment of the primary mirror and that's where you where you'll need the Howie Gladder laser collimator and the concentric circle attachment piece okay guys so for this next step what we're gonna do is check the alignment of the primary mirror 
And my guess is with the tweaks that we've made with the focuser and then the secondary, the primary is probably going to need some adjustment. Now for this particular step, I have found it is from what I, my personal experience, I have found it is a must to use the Howie Gladder laser collimator and the concentric circle attachment. Now there are other systems out there like Hotec makes one that looks like it would work well with this as well, but it's even more expensive. So to me, the least expensive, but most effective budget wise is a Howie Gladder laser with a concentric circle uh, attachment piece for the laser. And the reason why that's important is because it's going to help you determine how aligned your primary mirror is. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you guys what to look for. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the telescope itself is level. So, as before, put my leveler on to get these two areas adjusted. I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. That's level. All right, so that's leveled. Let's zoom in here. And what we're looking for, now the first time I did this, there were actually a set of almost five rings. There was four and then a, a fifth one. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but let me see if I can zoom in more. There is actually, yeah, you can kind of begin to see it. There is a faint ring there on the upper left area right up here, right up in there, that is visible in that end, but is not visible on the other end. So what we need to do is do some minor tweaks now to the primary mirror to make those, what we should see is four rings perfectly concentric. And we'll do a measurement check on that to check. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is loosen the locking screws here on the primary mirror. Now, I've done this before. Be careful not to mess with the focuser. Uh, pay, pay close attention to that because I've done this. I've, I'm over here watching and thinking that I'm loosening up on the primary mirror and I've actually adjusted the focuser again, which if you do that, you gotta start from scratch again. So don't make that mistake. All right, so let's do that. Let's loosen these up. So the next thing we're going to do, and all I did is I made some few small adjustments and it was pretty much in all three of them uh, to get it to where that fifth ring, which is pretty much, I don't even think you can really see it in the camera at this point, <clears throat> is gone for the most part, or at least it's evenly illuminated around the, the fourth one. So now we're going to take our calipers here and check some measurements. And see if the distance between these two, from the end of that to the end of that, matches this. And it does. Top. Is that? And it does. Okay, so we've got an aligned primary mirror. Next thing we're going to do is lock these back down. So that doesn't move. Now, you gotta be careful here. You don't wanna over tighten because if you do, it will change some of these adjustments you just made. I mean, you wanna tighten it, but you don't wanna over tighten. Just let it grab. Because you'll notice as you tighten, if you over tighten it, you can, you'll see the movement. You'll see, the, you'll see those laser, uh, you'll see the rings move a little okay i think we're good there let's go back to this one i feel like i didn't tighten it enough you don't want it to move and 
Jack here. Just eat just a little bit on each one. And we're just doing a, maybe a, another, another 30 second of a turn here. Just to make sure these are nice and tight, tightened down. Get that in there. Come on now. Okay. We have successfully aligned the focuser, then the secondary mirror, and the primary mirror using these tools. Now, it doesn't stop here. We, we've done what's pretty much called a rough alignment, okay, a rough collimation. But as you get more experience doing this, you'll get even better and better at making it more precise. I've gotten fairly good at it to the point where once I do a star test, I'm making very minor, if any, tweaks. So that's going to be the final check. You know, the final check, when it comes down to it, guys, we're going for tight, sharp stars. And if your, your out of focus star is not showing that nice concentric ring profile that it's supposed to, then something's off, right? So what I'm going to do now, since we still got some daylight, is just do a visual check with some eyepieces about three or 400 yards down the way, okay? With the highest magnification eyepiece I can get and see how sharp that image is. That will, that's a telltale sign if you're on the right track and you've, you've done a good job of collimating. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if I see that I'm getting a nice tack shark image, I know my collimation is very close, if not good to go. But that star test is a good final check to do. All right, so instead of using an eyepiece so that you guys can actually see a live view of what's going on here, I've got the DSLR hooked up to the telescope, okay? So we're gonna just focus in on something really far off in the distance here in my neighborhood and see how sharp we can get this image, okay? Okay, I think we're getting close and... There we go, that's, that's pretty sharp. There's some turbulence due to the fact that I've had this scope indoors for the past five, six hours and I just brought it out here. So watch, if you, you wanna see what that looks like zoomed in close. Let's see if we can zoom in close here. Eh, it won't let me do it on a preview, but if you look at the leaves, you can kind of see them going in and out of focus a little bit. In focus, out of focus. But for the most part, when it's in focus, uh, that looks pretty sharp, that looks pretty good. So that's promising. So the next and final step in this process is going to be doing the star test. And you can use an artificial star, put a little piece of aluminum over a flashlight, poke the tiniest possible hole you can and put it at least 100 yards or so out, at least with this kind of scope, because of its focal length. And you can test it that way. And depending on the weather, um, I might have to do it that way. So I've done it that way before, it works fine. If your seeing conditions are good to average, you can use a real star. But it will be the true and final test of showing you how aligned you got everything. And then if there are adjustments that need to be made at that point, I'll show you guys how to do that. And then that will be it. Okay guys, so for our final test, we are going to star test. Now, um, it's been cloudy for weeks and there's no sign of that going away. So I created an artificial star just using a headlamp and some aluminum foil. It's real easy to do and uh, it can help you you know, in times where you, you can't get a real star. Let's take a look at what we have here and, and see what we got. Okay, so as you can see, if you look into the other camera here, I have created a little diffraction ring. Now this is a little too out of focus and I'm out of back focus, so I'm just gonna manually back this out with my hand so we can get a better feel for how centered that secondary mirror, and what we're talking about is that black uh, circle there in the middle we want that to be completely concentric so let's see what happens here when we take this out it's slightly off you see it's just a little bit um, it's just a little to the left lower left there so we're gonna make us this is why it's important to do this because I didn't see this with the laser collimator or the Cheshire so we're gonna make a small adjustment really small I mean it's close so let's go ahead and do that and see what it looks like after. Okay, so now we are going to make a final adjustment to the primary mirror. Using your hex key, loosen up all the locking screws, there's three of them, on the primary mirror.
and we know I'm going to back this out a little so you can see a little bit better there you see how that center dot shifts a little to the left and a little down we need to get that centered so that's going to be the adjustment we make Okay, so after making a few more final tweaks to the primary mirror, I was able to get a nice concentric secondary in that out of focus star. And I did a test shot, zoomed in tight, did a 200% crop, everything looks nice and sharp. So everything is now properly collimated with the RC telescope. And I look forward to taking it out with that mono camera and getting some fantastic images. A couple of things I wanna point out. This process of collimating is a very uh, repetitive, iter iterative process. And what I mean by that is, once you've gone through step one of aligning the focuser, and then of course step two, aligning the secondary, and the first time you do primary adjustment using the concentric circle attachment on the Howie Gladder laser collimator, you'll need to go back and check the alignment again of the secondary with the Cheshire. And you're going to find that since you made adjustments to the primary, you're going to have to go and make some small adjustments to the secondary. You may have to repeat this two, three, maybe four times. But each time you repeat it, the adjustments will get smaller. If you're making small turns and adjustments to getting it correct, they will get smaller. And once it gets to the point, after about three or four repeats of that step, once it gets to the point where you can no longer distinguish um, the adjustments being made and it looks to be really well collimated that's when you move on to the star test just a note about rc telescopes in general they have such a low collimation tolerance meaning by that the precision has to be pretty tight in order for you to get some nice sharp images uh, this can fr be frustrating uh, i will say you know it's taken me months to kind of get this procedure down and feel comfortable doing it and if first time doing this procedure even with this video you're going to be uncomfortable you're going to feel like oh, i broke something i messed something up um, as long as you avoid touching that secondary mirror center screw you really can't mess this thing up i mean you can get it out of collimation pretty bad i had it so out of whack one time i thought it, there was no way and you just keep tweaking use a camera to check so you can have a live view of when you're adjusting the secondary you know have that camera looking through the Cheshire and zoomed in as tight as you can and same thing with the uh, primary mirror and get the Howie Glider laser collimator with the concentric circle attachment now it's my understanding that this attachment piece I think is they stopped making it so you can find it on the secondhand market or there's a couple other stores online that do sell it I'll send you I'll put a link in the description below of the uh, store where I got this one and I don't think there's many left floating around but I personally think it's it's absolutely necessary there's probably some other ways of doing this where you could get around not having it but for the way I do this um, I believe it's a necessary tool to have to properly collimate your primary mirror um, you can get away with just star testing for the primary mirror but to get it close that collimation tool really helps a lot well guys that concludes the video on rc collimation for today if you felt like this was a useful video helps you out in, in getting your optics aligned please like subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos if you have any other general astrophotography questions feel free to put them in the uh, comment section below i'll do my best to answer those and if you're interested in any of the gear that I use for astrophotography, uh, like the scopes, mounts, and accessories, I've put some links down in the description where you can purchase some of those items. Thanks for watching, and until next time, clear skies.